Hi, good morning, Darren. So Hi, what Joe. prompted me to call you was the fact I was travelling um, back home on the M4, which people will know is being turned into a smart motorway. It's taken about two years, and it's still a number of years away. Um, is that the bit just past the, Heath, the bit just past Heathrow, uh, sort of junction well, six onwards? That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I come off at junction eight slash nine, and I'm, I'm back home now. But yeah. just come back from uh, Bristol area. But um, my thought around this was that the public need to have a a good degree of confidence that the highways agency are able to manage these effectively. And my my kind of gripe is that, that I've lost count of so many times when I've been driving along the motorway and you slow down for a speed restriction yep. or some report of debris, obstruction, whatever, and it becomes clear that that was from hours ago and they've just forgotten to turn off the sign and update it. And yes. in my view, that's just not good enough. You're crying wolf. And... You know, you wouldn't expect um, that degree of negligence to be prevalent amongst, you know, the signalers on the railway. Uh, yeah. We wouldn't accept yeah. that as a public. You wouldn't accept air traffic controllers doing that, you know, at Heathrow. So mm -hmm. why are the highways agency not taking this seriously enough? I've got a friend who works in one of the control centres, mm -hmm. and he basically said, well, they try their best, they're busy, they're doing other tasks, and sometimes they forget. Well, that's just not good enough. That's people's lives in your hand. You should be monitoring that. So yeah. I think... The highways agency have just got so many questions that they need to answer here before the public can trust but them I, to I, run these safely. I think that's uh, that's all correct, but I think there's actually a bit of a red herring there, if I may say so, Joe, because even if you automate that process as it relates to detecting vehicles having broken down in, in, the, in the, the live running lane, even if a computer does it, and, and is monitoring this all of the time and gets the information on the gantry about a breakdown up instantaneously, that's still not going to be fast enough, f perhaps, for someone who's directly behind that vehicle and can't get out of the way in time. Well, I'm, I'm inclined to agree that you're right. Um, I, I guess whenever there is a collision on the motorway, you get a series of collisions afterwards, don't you? Yeah, From, yeah. Um, you know, the, the, it can be a knock-on for several cars behind. So maybe... Um, but I, I just think there needs to be much more research, much more data, better transparency from the government and, and whoever else is pushing yeah. these out. And the public should be right in demanding better road safety because, you know, mm. people's lives mean too much to be lost in this way. So what happens if we get the information that we've been seeking, talking to Neil Gregg there, making the case that, that we, yeah, we've got data that says smart motorways are on balance safer than non-smart motorways. But what we don't know is if, if, if a newly created section of smart motorway is safer than the non-smart version that preceded it. If we get that missing part of the puzzle, and it does turn out that the data points to smart motorways being safer, that's going to feel very counterintuitive, isn't it? It will, and I think that data will be... Um you know, we'll need to scrutinise that and properly understand it. Um, and, and is that, you know, research and data meaningful? Um, who's, you know, who's done that and has it been reviewed properly? Because I'm I'm not keen on the idea of, you know, data being commissioned um, to suit a particular narrative that yeah. the government may have already had in mind. So I'd be keen to have that independently scrutinised. Um, but it is a big concern. And my other point was around, you know, do with the changes in working habits and the fact that there's going to be more working from home, what's the economic driver for these smart motorways? Is it the same as 10 years ago when we knew that levels of traffic were going to carry on rising and rising? I'm aware of so many friends and a family who will not be going back full time to commuting. And it just makes me wonder, is is the kind of economic case for them as strong as it was, you know, three to well, three years ago? I think there's an economic case for more roads and more capacity. I don't think that this is the way that you achieve it, but I think there is a case for that because even before the pandemic, you know, even if we froze things at the point of the pandemic, there was a problem with congestion. And as we heard from, from Neil Gregg, uh, levels of uh, travelling, levels of congestion, getting back to pretty much where they were before the pandemic anyway. So we, we need more capacity on the road network. I, I, I don't think this is the, the best way of achieving it, though. E even though that was the... The honourable intention, because, I mean, like me, Joe, you've probably, at some point, been stuck in a traffic jam, looked at the hard shoulder and thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could just nip up there? I mean, I think that's where the, the smart motorway idea came from, I guess. Well, it does, but if I'm ever unfortunate enough to be involved in an accident, I want to know that, you know, those emergency services can get to me within yes. a reasonable time yeah. frame. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I know the, the emergency services are not keen on these smart motorways either, for obvious reasons. Um, 
very dangerous if you're um, working for the RAC or somebody like that, having to try and fix, you know, someone's pirate side of the road. And, um, mm. you know, I know the refugees are better. You know, they're, they're kind of a, a safer area. They're, they're set further back. But I, I, I'm just not convinced by by the, the kind of narrative that's being yeah. put forward from the government. I'm just deeply concerned that yeah. um, we're sleepwalking into our motorways being made more unsafe than they ought to be. And, um, is, you know, who's who's going to challenge the government on that? And who's going to stop them from rolling these out? Because they they just seem to be, you know, determined to carry on rolling them out. And I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm deeply concerned. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I do wonder if the uh, Transport Select Committee, if, if they having called for evidence, which they, they did up until the 9th of April, having called for evidence, if their inquiry does conclude that these things are unsafe and they're unpopular, which means that they're not going to work terribly well because people aren't going to want to use them. And there's an issue as well about congestion, about uh, pollution, I should say, which we'll get to as well. That's something else that they're looking at. If this um, inquiry does conclude that these are not good things and it would be better if we didn't have them, I'm not sure that's going to change the government's mind, not least because so much of this system has already been built, or at least so much of the construction has begun. And, you know, these are maybe sunk costs, but they are considerable. I don't know how much the smart motorway program has cost already, whether there's an appetite to simply throw all of that money in the bin. In fact, it wouldn't even just be about throwing the money that's already been spent into the bin, because you'd have to spend more undoing the process which has already begun. Joe and Maidenhead, thank you very much um, for that. I I've got here what the... Uh, committee have been looking for in their call for evidence and, and it serves quite well actually as a, a series of questions that I'd like to ask you as well. Uh, views on a whole variety of aspects of smart motorways which the Transport Select Committee have asked for and those submissions as I say were in by the 9th of April so I'll put that to you in just a, a few moments time but for now 0345 6060 973 is the number. Are smart motorways really smart do you think? Can they ever be safe? And are you happy to use them? LBC News Time at 2.31. The headlines come from Lucinda Horsley.